Your voice, your music, your station, WGHC 98.3 FM. All right. Thank you all for tuning in to WJT 98.3 FM, your voice, your music, your station. My name is Jeff Badu, and I am a multiplier and a serial entrepreneur. I'm the owner and founder of Badu Enterprises, LLC, which is a multinational conglomerate in the financial services industry. And we provide services such as tax preparation, tax planning, um, retirement services, and all things of that nature. So today, welcome to Money Talks. Um, the show, and as usual, we go from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, and we usually bring on different guests to the show just to talk about different topics, um, and today we, we have Mr. Neil Shore, um, who's going to talk about retirement planning, um, so just to do a quick sound check, can you hear me, Neil? Yes. Okay, cool. So you're perfectly live on the radio. We'll give um, an introduction of who you are. Um, in just a few minutes or so, and we'll get into the spiel, but I'm glad the mic is working, so we're definitely going to be locked and loaded. Okay, great. You're, you're going to do like a market report initially? Yes, yeah, so we, we will absolutely be, so we'll we'll kick off the show here, and ultimately, as usual, we'll be doing our market report, um, and as soon as we're done with the market report, we'll get right into the presentation. Today's presentation is very special. The theme of this year is really centered around retirement, um, retirement planning, um, just different different types of accounts that you can use. So last year and in the past, I've been mainly the one that's been presented on the show. Um, so this year, my goal was to bring in industry experts to really talk about different topics. And today's and this year's focus is really saving for the future or saving for retirement. So every single week, we'll have different guests on the show. Some you'll see right here um, next to me. Some will be on air or some will be over the phone, just like today. Um, but let's get right into the market report. Actually, before that, I would like to wish an, a happy early Valentine's Day to all the lovely ladies out there. Um, this is a very special week for a lot of people, you know, so this is hopefully everybody has fun. Hopefully everybody has a great time. Um, but we'll get into the market report. So this report is as of the market closed February 8, 2019, so as of last Friday. So most of the benchmark index is essentially posted gains um, for the seventh consecutive week, which is awesome. That means that since the beginning of 2019, we have ended the week essentially in, in positive territory. And we'll get into that in a second. So only the global Dow lag behind. Um, utilities and information technology or IT shares performed well last week, while oil and energy shares did not fare quite so favorably. 
international trade once again was in the news as negotiations between the United States and China continue with no apparent resolution in sight. Investors will keep investors will be keeping their eyes on the rhetoric um, for both of the global um, economic giants as the deadline for the tariff truce draws nearer. Um, one of the indexes, essentially the Nasdaq, ultimately led the way, followed by the Russell 2000, which continued to perform best since the beginning of the year. So far, oil prices um, this week or last week went down from 55.37 per barrel to 52.71 per barrel. Price of Comax Gold went down from 13.22 per ounce to 13.17.90. And so far, and, and this is awesome news right here for those of us that love to invest, for my stock market folks or for my market folks in general, we've had an awesome year so far. Hopefully we keep it up. Um, hopefully the government, you know, the potential government shutdown that's coming up doesn't affect us too much. But here we go. Dow Jones is up 7.63% so far as of last Friday. NASDAQ is up 9.99%. You know, of course, NASDAQ is filled with tech stocks. So tech stocks have um, performed really well this year. Um, S&P 500 up 8.02%. Global Dow up 11.70%. And then we have, I'm sorry, Russell 2000, which is the hottest so far on the list, 11.70%. That is really, really hot. Um, and then Global Dow, 6.72%. Federal funds rate did not change. Uh, we're still at two, two and a half basis points to two and a quarter. Or I'm sorry, two and a quarter to two and a half basis points um, on the federal funds rate. So with that being said, let me get into an introduction of our speaker today, Mr. Neil Shore. Um, so I'll get into the bio, and of course, Neil, please feel free to correct me, make any, you know, additions or anything like that. This is your show. This is your floor. You know, um, we thank you for the opportunity for you to be able to speak to my listeners today. Um, it's truly an honor to have industry experts. Neil is very seasoned, so let me get into his bio. Neil Shore and Kathy Tompkins founded Shore Tompkins in 2004 to be a leading creative high-touch retirement consulting firm exclusively focus on strategic consulting, design, and administration for all major types of retirement and pension plans. Neil has 29 years of actuarial and benefit consulting experience, specializing in pension plan design, consulting, and actuarial services. Initially with William M. Mercer, Inc., one of the largest human resources and benefit consulting firms in the world, Neil provided pension consulting and actuarial valuation services for both public and private pension plans and served as a managing consultant for many clients. During his time with Mercer, Neil became an associate of the Society of Actuaries, an enrolled actuary, and a member of the American Academy of Actuaries. In 1993, Neil became chief actuary and head of actuarial services at Pension Resources, a division of Friedman, um, Einstein, Raymer, and Schwartz, and, Schwartz um, and the largest local accounting firm in Illinois. Neil was directly responsible for managing client relationships and the growth of the actuarial practice. In 1996, he became a partner in the firm. Following a merger into RSM McGladgery, Neil became a managing director and national director of actuarial services, where he was responsible for the strategic direction and growth of the practice. During a period serving as managing director, the actuarial practice experienced the fastest growth within the firm's multiple divisions. Neil is a strategic thinker, an excellent speaker who frequently presents to insurance, investment, and accounting groups regarding multiple approaches to retirement plan design. He provides himself on he prides himself on prompt, personalized, and outstanding client service. Neil holds a bachelor's degree in actuarial science from the University of Illinois. Wow, this is um, quite a bio, Neil. Thank you for, I mean, I, it is, I would like to kick off the show by saying it is truly an honor to have such an experienced individual um, on a call today. Um, I mean, it is absolutely an honor. We appreciate the opportunity to get some information from you, and I know for a fact that my listeners and including myself will gain a lot of valuable insight. So how's everything going, Neil? Very well. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Jeff. I uh, enjoy the opportunity and uh, uh, retirement plans are a uh, big growing area right now and there's some 
the direction of the legislative climate has made these plans more flexible, more beneficial uh, to business owners, to employees. So there's uh, quite a bit of opportunities for uh, for a lot of people to accumulate a lot a lot greater tax savings uh, nowadays compared to uh, 20 years ago. Where the the um, direction the direction of uh, changes in legislation has, been, has uh, made these plans so, uh, much more favorable. Uh, the fact that there's been a concern about not having enough retirement money for the masses in general has led to this. And even going forward, this seems to be one area uh, where uh, favorable tax treatment should be go- should be allowed for for the foreseeable future. Again, mo- mostly to protect the. Uh, the um, the baby boomers and the future of retirees uh, of the country. So right right now, there's a real shortage in uh, retirement benefits for people. So we'll talk further about that. Yeah, absolutely, definitely appreciate that. Um, and just just before we really kick off the presentation, Neil will get into his spiel in a second. Um, but if you do have any questions, we are live on Facebook. You can find me on Facebook at J E F F B A D U Jeff Badu. You can also stream live at WGHCFM.org. Um, please feel free to type in any questions you have via the Facebook Live. You can also call into the station, 773-942-7167. Once again, 773-942-7167. Uh, we would love to take questions throughout the presentation. I'll chime in on some stuff. I'll ask some questions. Um, and then about 7.55 or so, we'll be wrapping up the presentation. Um, Neil will be giving his contact information to our listeners. Please feel free to reach out to him. Um, this is truly valuable information, stuff that is not always available. Um, this is an opportunity to really, really get some really good free, really good and free advice. So with that being said, let's kick it off, Neil. Th- thank you very much, uh, Jeff. Let's let's talk first about why retirement benefits are provided through businesses and employers as opposed to letting people either uh, um, uh, find ways to save for their retirement on, on their own. It all comes down to uh, taxes. The, uh, the tax code provides favorable treatment and tax breaks for both employers and employees that contribute to the plans and, and employees to, uh, to provide employee benefits uh, w- when they retire. So if the employer putting money in or the employee putting the money is saving taxes and the employee taking the money out of the plan is is saving taxes um, basically there's more wealth to accumulate uh, down the road so it's a, it's a very tax effective way to provide uh, provide retirement uh, benefits or accumulate wealth for people um, we have basically two types of I'm going to describe two types of retirement plans or two types of objectives that are out there. And we're going to focus a little more on one versus the other uh, tonight. But um, uh, a majority of plans, of retirement plans, are what we call having an employee benefit objective. The the employer is, is is providing these retirement benefits to attract, retain, and reward employees like, a, for example, a large 401k plan or a profit-sharing plan where an employer puts money in for, for an account for the employees or a pension plan where an employer might provide um, their employees with, once they retire at a certain age, an annuity for the remainder of their lives. Those are all employer benefit, employee, employee benefit plans. The company basically is uh, is using the plan to attract, retain, and reward employees. And there's different ways to set up the plan to attract, to, to reward the people who you want. You might want to reward older employees. You might want to reward longer-term employees. You might want to provide everybody the same benefit as a percentage of pay. There's, there's a lot of ways to to, de, uh, to design such a plan. And the it gives employees a chance to save save uh, money themselves and ultimately the employer it is a uh, the employer uh, the, instead of giving an em- their employees greater salary and say go out and save for your save uh, for your retirement benefits yourself the employer is actually um, paying for a lot of these benefits through tax breaks it's a cheaper cheaper or less expensive way to provide uh, retirement benefits. 
The second type of plan, the first being an employee benefit plan, and by the way, most plans might have, some plans might have a combination of these two objectives, but the second type of objective is when, an, is when a business owner is using the plan as a wealth accumulation or tax savings vehicle for the business owner. And what's really happening there is the if the if the business owner is receiving a benefit and the tax savings that the business owner receives because of funding through a these retirement plans where you get tax deductions and the money that goes into the plan is not taxed while it's in the plan uh, if those tax benefits for the business owner for his own benefit his is um, more generous, or excuse me, uh, is, is, is more is more generous than the cost to provide benefits for the remaining employees. This work this works as a uh, as a nice employee, uh, excuse me, a nice wealth accumulation vehicle. So, this particular scenario, the, the employees are getting a nice retirement benefit, and it's being fully paid for by the government. The government is paying for the full cost of the staff's benefits and a good portion of the owner's benefits uh, as well. So the owner, everybody is a winner. The owner, the owner is getting uh, a greater retirement benefit than he would be if he tried to invest outside the plan, even after you consider the cost to provide benefits for the staff. And the, and the employees are also getting an, empl uh, an employee benefit. So usually in these wealth accumulation vehicles, it's kind of a combination of um, – of wealth accumulation for the business owner and employee uh, benefits for the staff. Let me let me try to give you a feel for um, a numerical example to kind of understand where, why there's there's such nice tax savings in investing inside these retirement plans. Let, let, let's use a 401k uh, plan as an example. A 401k is where an employee is allowed to put some of their own money in the plan. Someone says, well, why put money in the plan when you could perhaps invest the money outside the plan? It's, it's your own money. Why not have more control by keeping it outside the, uh, of, of the retirement plan? Well, let's say we have a 25-year-old that's earning $35,000, and he says, gee, I could afford to save 10% of my salary or $3,500. Well, if he puts the money in the 401k plan, he's investing $3,500 before he pays taxes on any of it. If he tries to invest $3,500 of his salary outside the plan, that $3,500 might be taxed first, and it might, he might only get to invest $2,500. So suddenly he's investing $3,500 when he's investing inside the plan. 2500 when he's investing outside the plan. So not only so you, you, he has more money to uh, to invest. Now not only does he have more money to invest, where the where the where he's going to get more investment return. If you're investing $3,500, you're likely to get more investment return than if you invest $2,500. But not only are you going to get a greater return in aggregate dollars because you're investing more. The actual investment return itself is not is not taxed when it's inside the retirement plan, and it, depending upon the type of investment, uh, it, it quite often is taxed when it's invested outside of the plan. So, in our example, the thirty-five hundred dollars that's invested inside the plan, you have a thirty-five hundred dollar investment. Let's say, for example, um, it um, it returns. Uh, $350. At the end of the year, you might have $3,500 plus your $350 invest, uh, investment return, or $3,850. If you invest outside the plan, you are only investing $2,500. So instead of getting $350 for an investment return, you might only be getting $250 as an investment return. But that $250 might be taxed. So perhaps your investment return after taxes might only be $200. So if, if when you invest outside the plan, you put 3500 you're investing 3500 of your salary. 1000 of it is taxed, so you only get to invest 2500. 
then you earn investment return of $250, but $50 of it is taxed, you now have $2,700 in your account. In my example, when you, had, when you were investing inside the plan, you had $3,850 to invest. You had the, the full $3,500 pre-tax that went into the plan, plus the $350 of, of investment earnings. Now, so, you, so by the end of the first year, there's $3,850 inside the plan. The same salary produces about $2,700 outside the plan. Now, each year, this 25-year-old earns interest until they retire, let's say at age 65. They're going to get more, more investment return every single year for the next 40 years because it's more more money is being invested because you're not paying taxes on it now. You have more to invest. Plus, all of that money each year, when it's in the plan, the investment return itself is not taxable, and there's a compounding effect year after year of putting in 10% of your salary and, and, and earning investment return on the prior balance so that in a typical example, uh, which I was providing here, where we have a 25-year-old who starts out with $35,000 salary, might get a 4% raise each year, continues to put 10% in the plan. If we were con comparing putting 10% of the salary into the retirement plan versus trying to invest outside, he might have about three times as much after-tax wealth for his retirement by investing inside the plan. So this 25-year-old who put $3,500 in a 401k, his own money, that might be as valuable as being handed an $8,000 of additional salary or as a raise. So 401k or any type of retirement benefit, even if the employee is putting the money in himself, is a wonderful employee benefit and a form of additional compensation. Uh, by not putting the money in the, in the plan, this employee is le leaving an awful lot of money on the table. Now, now in my example, um, I've indicated that because of the compounding effect of having more money work for you and not paying um, taxes uh, on the investment return or the original money that you put in the plan, you might have three times as much um, uh, money um, uh, down the road, um, the, the reality of it is that's even under the best of circumstances because quite often when, especially a 25-year-old, when the money is not invested in the plan, it might be more apt to be used to purchase a new car or purchase some sort of luxury item. So we're, when we say that there's going to be so much more wealth down the road and say there might be three times as much after-tax wealth, we're assuming that if, uh, if the person did not invest in the plan, they might be investing the money outside the plan, but the reality is they probably wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be investing nearly as much, and the real disparity in the retirement benefit is probably going to be far more than, uh, than three times. Is that... Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes that makes a lot okay. of sense. Now, I do have a really, really quick question. So I know you mentioned um, it sounds like what you're referring to as far as the benefits of saving through retirement are really the taxes, you know, the ability to invest pre-tax. And, of course, you have some after-tax contributions that you can do known as the Roth 401K. Um, okay. So that's one benefit you did mention that another benefit that i heard was really compound interest the ability to accumulate wealth in a very fast way over time um you know in a tax-friendly environment so those are two benefits those are the two benefits that i got are there any additional benefits um when you're saving yeah. for retirement well um uh, yeah, uh, yes, as far as the money that that accumulates, but uh, let, me, let me go through a couple a couple scenarios. One is um, it's a good form of even for people who are fairly well off to leave money for their for their heirs, their descendants. Um, when employees retire from a uh, or or a business owner retires, 
they they don't uh, they only they have to take modest amounts out at seventy and a half. Now some people might need to take money out earlier or might need to take more money out. But for those that might be fairly well off, they roll the money into an IRA, which is called an individual it's for individual retirement accounts when they retire, which has the same uh, effect as a uh, as the as the regular retirement plan, the qualified like the four hundred one k plan. While it's in that plan, it does it continues to grow and compound um, without paying taxes. Upon the the um, IRA owner's death, the money could be rolled into spouse's IRAs or children's IRAs who might have decades more of life expectancy, and by means some of this money could provide millions and millions of extra dollars for um, for the family. So it's a good way of, of um, not just providing benefits for, for oneself, it's a, it, you could also accumulate, uh, certainly it's a way of providing additional wealth uh, for the legacy uh, as well. Now, the second scenario is, when you ask, is there, is there a, uh, Jeff, is there a um, benefit of uh, the retirement plan other than this tax savings and the compounding of interest? There's also a lot of flexibility. You know, I started to mention earlier that there are certain types of plans that are meant for the business owner. That's, this is a good example of, uh, of this. We are, based on the designs of these plans, quite often the, you could provide your older employees or the business owner who quite often is much older than the remaining employees much more as a percentage of pay compared to the to the remaining employees, as long as you prove that it's non-discriminatory. Now, someone might ask, um, if you give a business owner who's earning two hundred fifty thousand, fifty thousand dollars of benefits, and you give, um, say for example, somebody that's earning uh, twenty thousand dollars. Let's say you give them only five percent or a thousand dollars. The business owner got. Uh, basically uh, 25%, so it's a uh, $50,000 benefit on a $250,000 salary. The 20-year-old uh, uh, earning $20,000 received, uh, $20, received $1,000 or 5%. One might ask, how could that not be discriminatory? Well, one of the components of the testing, uh, you either can have like what's called a pre-approved plan or numerically prove that these plans are not discriminatory. One of the components of the testing considers the fact that when you put a dollar in, in a fund for a 20-year-old, it accumulates to a lot more money at age 65 than when you put a dollar in a fund for a 50-year-old. So let's say the 50-year-old's owner, who you put $50,000 in, if they were to earn interest for 15 years on the $50,000 contribution, and you take that as a percentage of their $250,000 salary, that might actually be a smaller number than the 20-year-old who received $1,000 has 45 years to earn interest. Take that as a percentage of the $20,000, and and it appears as though that person is getting a higher future benefit as a percentage of their own salary, even though the contribution is far less as a percentage of pay. Uh, there's a lot of interesting design ideas out there. And again, not every employer may want to use the plan as a wealth accumulation vehicle for the business owner, but quite often, if a business owner could save quite a bit in taxes, it's a good way to incent them to provide some fairly generous benefits for the employees who desperately need this for for their own retirement. So, in a way, the um, the business owner might be saving quite a bit of taxes, and at the same time, some of the um, some of the tax savings is, might be used to pay for the cost of the benefits for the staff. But there's still quite a bit of additional tax savings, so that. Under, under these types of plans, if, for example, uh, let's say the business owner was giving, I'm um, making this up, was giving himself, uh, putting in $50,000, let's say $100,000 for himself, and the aggregate cost for the staff, I'm making up numbers, is $25,000. If he did not have the plan, 
he'd have this $125,000 that is not going into the plan, the 100 that he was going to give himself, the 25 for the staff. All 125, if he didn't have a plan, might go to him. But he might. But but if he but he the hundred by not having the plan, the hundred twenty the five thousand dollars is taxable income, and maybe after taxes he might only have seventy five thousand dollars to invest, and of course the investment return itself is going to be taxable. If he does not, if he if he does if instead of taking the hundred twenty five thousand for himself, if he puts the money in a plan where he gets a hundred and the staff gets twenty five, then. It's, he has a, he has actually a hundred thousand dollars to invest and invest very tax effectively using that the compound interest theory that we were describing earlier, and even after we consider the twenty five thousand that went to the staff, that hundred thousand will provide far more wealth than the one twenty five would have provided because he would have had to pay taxes on the one twenty five immediately. If it did not go into the plan, he'd get the full 125. When it goes into the plan, he's only getting 100, giving away 25. Uh, but the 100, because it's pre-tax, the 125 would have to pay taxes, and he might only be able to. It might only be about 75,000 after tax, and then the investment return itself is not taxable while it's in the plan. That 100 will provide more wealth. Uh, than, than the 125 would, would if he had not been in the plan. So what, what, what I'm essentially saying is that when these plans are designed well, the business owner will accumulate more wealth even after considering the cost to provide benefits uh, for the staff. Okay. Wow, that is, that is awesome. Now, another thing, too, um, just so everybody knows this, but I heard, you know, that retirement plans are also bankruptcy protected. Is that true that no predator can come after you in your retirement plan? So, uh, some plans, yes. Some plan, but, 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 let me say most plans, yes. So, uh, some, pl some plans, no. Four, 401k plans, profit sharing plans, um, which are the vast majority of the plans out there, those are always sheltered from creditors the same way uh, the, uh, the same way you're reducing your taxes, you're also um, they're also off limits to the creditors of the of uh, of the employer while the money is in the plan. To find benefit pension plans, those, again, those are the plans that might provide an annuity for life or a big lump sum of money, which are very big, um, very uh, uh, big right now for small businesses because. The concept I described earlier, where the business owner can put away quite a bit of money uh, and have a greater, not only put away much more money, but also a greater disparity in benefits between himself or herself and the remaining employees. Those, um, th those, those, those plans um, sometimes are, sometimes are not subject to. Um, uh, subject to the creditors of, 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 the, of the employer upon bankruptcy. If, as long as the plan is, um, the, the general rule is uh, all plans are, are, uh, are protected except for those that, that um, doesn't cover common law employees. So, for example, if a uh, a sole proprietor has their own plan, or or for example, and again we're only talking about this defined benefit pension plan. If if it's a one person plan that's covering the owner, or let's say you have a group of radiologists that are all owners, that they don't really have any employees because they 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 don't may they may not own the imaging center, or they might use the hospital's facilities as opposed to so they don't really have any of their own employees. In those particular cases, those, those benefits, when there are no common law employees in a defined benefit pension plan, those, uh, those sometimes are going to be subject to uh, creditors of the employer, depending upon state law. But overwhelmingly, most of the time, money and retirement plans are not subject to, uh, again, for these few rare exceptions, are not subject to creditors of the employer. It's, it's, uh, it's certainly safe. And, and for business owners that might be in areas that might have, there might be some concern about lawsuits and so forth, like 
physician groups and so forth, assuming their employees are in their plan, which is the case most of the time. Um, it's, an, it's another way of protecting the, uh, the physicians' the money against, uh, against the creditors. All right, that is awesome. And just, um, just as a quick, quick note, housekeeping, um, thank you all once again for tuning in to WJT 98.3 FM, um, your voice, your music, your station. This is a show, Money Talks. All we talk is money. And if you do have any questions, um, you know, we're having a great segment, great presentation here today. Um, with Neil. If you have any questions, please feel free to chime into the Facebook. Um, we are live on Facebook. So if you go on my Facebook page, this is streaming live. Um, you can type in any questions that you have. Also, you can call into the studio, 773-942-7167 if you have any questions. Um, you can always email us, um, call us, all that good stuff. Um, but Neil, I do have a quick question. Um, so how does the new tax reform actually affect all of this stuff? Like, how does the new tax reform really affect a person's retirement plan? It, the, there's um, one scenario, and again, let's go back to the scenario of the examples we've been using uh, more recently of when we use the plan as a wealth accumulation for the business owner. What, uh, let me back up for the moment. The new tax law provides for certain business owners, an extra 20% deduction on qualified business income in certain circumstances. As a, um, uh, as a, as a general rule, companies that, um, that are in a uh, professional service type, uh, type role, like, a, like an accounting firm or a doctor or a lawyer, those, those type of practices, in order to qualify for this 20% deduction on your qualified business income, this extra deduction, you need to, um, on, a, on their joint tax return, have less than $315,000 of taxable income. So let's say we have a physician who, before considering whether to make a contribution into a retirement plan. Maybe we use what's called a cash balance pension plan where you're able to make larger contributions. Let's say he has $415,000 uh, of a gross adjusted gross uh, income, excuse me. Um, and um, and uh, at $415,000, he might, based on 2018's tax rates, he might have a total taxable federal tax bill of maybe $125,000. Now, let's say that he puts $100,000 into this uh, pension plan. His 415 goes down to 315. Once he's at 315, he's now going to get a 20% deduction on his qualified business income. For our purposes, let's assume that the qualified business income, for sole, this is very easy for sole proprietors and certain partners, uh, let's assume that uh, the full 315000 is qualified business income that could be achieved in, with, with most partnerships. He would get a 20% deduction on that 315, leaving $252,000 of taxable income where the tax bill might wind up being about uh, $60,000. So what's interesting is by putting $100,000 in the pension plan, he reduced his taxes from 125 down to around 60. He saved $65,000 on a $100,000 contribution. Let's say he retires next year and takes the money out. Now, let me back up. I, I don't really believe he'll take the money out if he retires next year. He'll put it in an IRA where it continues to grow tax-deferred. So that's where the tax savings quite often is. It's that investment return and that compounding effect. Let's say he decided not to have that compounding effect of, of, uh, of the investments, but just simply takes the money out next year when he retires. He might be in a 25% tax bracket, here he's on his $100,000 contribution. He saved over $60,000 in taxes. When the money comes out, he might be in the 25% tax bracket and only pay 25% taxes. So what the tax law is doing is it's making that tax deduction and the, and the whole idea of having money grow tax-deferred and that compounding effect 
much, much more valuable because it's forcing you into even lower taxes, um, you know, uh, you know, through this new through this new tax act. Now, let's talk about who, who's affected by this. This is for people with pass-through income, like qualified business income. So it would be owners of S corporations, sole proprietors, and partners in partnerships. And again, if the, these are professional service organizations, they need to get below 315000 on their joint tax return to be able to fully benefit from this extra deduction. But it really makes this great story of saving for retirement that much better when we're talking to uh, business owners. You know, quite often a business owner, you know, who might not appreciate really just how much tax savings there is might sometimes say, oh, this looks nice, but I really don't want to give my employees $10,000. They may not even appreciate it. And the real answer when somebody asks that is, says that is, would you rather give the employee 10000 or the government $40,000? Because the government is really paying for all of the staff's costs, and sometimes employers might get emotional about some of their expenses, and, then without, uh, and they may not even give, give a second thought to well, what about your tax expense. That's kind of a, that's that that could be far more than some of your um, uh, some of your other expenses. So going back to the um, the qualified business income deduction. So in the example where we had where we had um, professional service people, they had to get below 315 in in, in income to to get this extra benefit. For, for organizations that are not professional service organizations, let's say like a manufacturing company, that they almost always will get this 20% deduction unless they uh, have very little W-2 amongst themselves and their employees. So in other words, there's a, there's a, there's a W-2 component instead of uh, if um, – the manufacturing company or this non-service company doesn't have very much W-2. It's just a small business for the business owner. Then that rule relative to getting below the 315 kicks in again, and then again the the idea of being able to put the money in the um, uh, using the using the uh, retirement plan to get below the 315 becomes very useful. Now for for non-professional service organizations have made much payroll, they're going to always get this 20% deduction regardless, so the pension plan's not going to help them. So the pension plan helps two types of groups relative to this additional deduction, the um, professional service organizations and non-professional service organizations that might have very little payroll, if, that, if that's, if that's uh, helpful. Um, but again, it's um, the um, the uh, uh, in these particular cases. What quite often what it does is, you know, in a lot of these these plans where people are trying to get below the 315, sometimes the owner might be getting 100 or 150 thousand dollars or 200 thousand dollars, depending upon their age, of contributions and deductions just for themselves. Now, one of the pitfalls, excuse me, that comes up is, um, well, gee, I can afford to put the $200,000 in the plan this year, but I don't really know about next year. Well, some of these plans where you're allowed to make much larger contributions, the plan is subject to minimum required contributions for, for year after year. So you only really go with this type of plan if you feel relatively confident that the cash is going to be there for the next few years to make these contributions. Well, if... Um, if the if you're suddenly getting a larger deduction right away due to this QBI, that might make the con the large contribution itself that much more affordable. Like in the CGA, I can I can um, I can, I can uh, barely sc uh, scrap to, to find two hundred thousand dollars to make or a hundred thousand dollars to put in the plan and get this great to get the tax savings. But now under this qualified business income deduction. If the, if the tax savings is even greater, it might make finding the money to make such a contribution a little bit easier, if that makes, 
if that makes uh, some sense. So it's it's a great opportunity, and I and I think the key thing to remember is um, the the area where um, the greatest opportunities and benefits right now are coming in are these small, closely held businesses where which where we're trying to accumulate wealth for business owners um, as, as it relates to the QBI. Um, the benefits to employees in general for any sort of 401k, you know, is still awfully wonderful. Like, you know, I gave that example of the 30 of the 25 year old earning $35,000 who has will accumulate so much more wealth down the road. So, what I sometimes think is, you know, the um, these these plans are not very costly to administer. And I use the example of that 25 year old's employee making $35,000. When he puts $3,500 in the plan, that has value of seven, eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000. That probably covers the whole cost to administer such a plan. So these plans are not expensive to administer relative to the overall value tax savings that business owners, employers, and employees are going to realize over the years that the plan exists. So it's a wonderful, wonderful way uh, to save taxes for everybody. All right. Thank you. Yeah, definitely appreciate that. Um, and just for those tuning in, we have about five or ten minutes or so. And Neil, I really, really want to ask this question. This question right here hits home. Um, I think this question, if you provide the answer to this question, it's going to help out a lot of viewers. Um, but what are some things that people can do in order to really get into the habit? Because Americans suck at saving. I mean, that's without question you know what are some things that people can do today or right now as we speak moving forward to get into better habits of saving for retirement the the very first item is to ma- is to max out or depending what the employee earns but to the extent to max out on the 401k plan somebody who earns and obviously it's easier for someone making a hundred thousand than fifty thousand the maximum that somebody can put in a 401k plan is nineteen thousand dollars. If you're over age, uh, if you're over age 50, it's twenty-five thousand. Let's, let's let's use the example for the people under age 50. If somebody is earning sixty-five thousand dollars, if they could train themselves to say, "I don't make sixty-five, I make forty-nine thousand dollars," and the truth is, it could be a little higher than that because remember you. On forty-nine thousand, you're going to pay less taxes than you are on sixty-five. But if you could live on the forty-nine of taxable income instead of sixty-five, and that's again, it's not. Um, I'm sorry. For, uh, excuse me. Uh, sixty-five minus nineteen is uh, forty-six. So you can live on forty-six in my example instead of sixty-five. It's not really costing you nineteen thousand because remember you're uh, you're saving the taxes on. You, know, you only pay taxes on forty-six thousand instead of sixty-five thousand. Year, you're going to, it might be a lower tax rate. Um, what I'm saying is if you could train yourself to say, this is really what I earn, you'll have so much more wealth down the road. And maybe the better way to say it is by not doing that or not thinking that way, you're leaving an awful lot of money on the table, much more than the average person realizes. So if we could start with 401K and simply say, I earn X dollars less than I, what my salary is because I realize this is real important for my future. I want, and it's also important for you to saving taxes today. Um, if it turns out you can only afford to put away 10000 it'll be $10,000. But even if it's a little bit painful, um, it has an awful lot of value that will pay a lot of dividends later on. Perhaps the first, the first thing to think of is, if I'm going to uh, reduce my salary by 49000 how much do I have to lower my standard of living? What are the things that I need to cut out in my life? If you could find, in the example, $19,000 of things to cut out, um, you have a lot, lot more savings and accumulation down the road. It's, um, it's really, again, I think the best way to describe it is you're leaving a lot of money on the table if, uh, when, you don't, when you don't think that way. Absolutely. Well, Neil, I sincerely appreciate the opportunity um, for you to be on the show. And we did have a quick comment or question on Facebook Live asking whether this will be um, posted or whether this will be, um, 
you know release and publish um, so every Facebook live session that I do is going to be published on my page so you can always watch it at any time you want um, so please feel free to you know if you I know there was there was a lot of things that were said on this segment so please I understand it takes time to, to digest to get this information so please feel free to rewatch this this will also be posted on my YouTube channel you know just go to Jeff Badu on YouTube you'll find me and you'll be able to watch this or if you're on my Facebook it will also be live um, but wow this is great information and I'm just so we know everything about the speaker I'm gonna give out your contact information if you're fine with that Neil um, oh, pl pl please do. Uh, pl uh, yeah, I appreciate that. And mm -hmm. and sometimes again, I know there might be a lot of different people in different situations in the audience. To the extent there are business owners out there, and they want to say, "Well, this sounds great. How does it work for me?" What we would do is we'd have, we'd provide a have them fill out a census listing on themselves if they have employees, their date, the name, the dates of birth, the dates of hires, and the salaries for the employees for themselves, and we would show them various options, our uh, retirement plans of what the plan might cost to provide benefits for themselves versus what it might cost to provide benefits for the remaining staff. And again, I think what they'll typically see is that everybody winds up coming coming out a winner. So. Those are th those are uh, those are things that we there's there's no charge for plan design work. We find the concept uh, quite often spells itself. And let me also quickly just mention uh, uh, close by uh, mentioning you know some people see these numbers they're surprised they might say oh is this you know is this um, this is incredible I I'm surprised it's allowed I never heard about it. is it uh, you know is it legal the, these plans are specifically approved by the IRS they're within the tax code. Uh, and usually, depending upon whether the plan's a pre-approved plan or not, we go, we go to the IRS for what's called a letter of determination, where they specifically approve your plan. Some plans, it's not as necessary. Um, or, 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 uh, um, but those are, those are things that are out there. All right. Thank you once again, Neil. It is greatly appreciated. And the thing that I really, really love about this segment is the fact that Neil shared it from both an employee and an employer perspective. So that's definitely awesome. If you need more, um, please reach out to him. Once again, his name is Neil Shore. Um, his, he's a principal of Shore Tompkins. Um, his direct contact information, if you want to reach him directly, his number is 312-762-5944. Once again, it's 312-762-5944. You can reach, reach him directly. Um, you can also email him at neil.shore, N-E-I-L dot S-H-O-R-E at Shore Tompkins, S-H-O-R-E T-O-M-P-K-I-N-S dot com. Um, I will also post this on a Facebook Live, um, you know, once we wrap up the presentation and everything. But Neil, thank you once again. This was awesome. We truly appreciate your insight that you're able to share with our listeners today. We hope to continue our partnership, our relationship. Um, and if you guys ever need anything from Neil, please feel free to reach out to him. Once again, his number is 312-762-5944. You can also reach me, 773-679-7198, and I'll connect you directly to Neil. So thank you, Neil, once again. Definitely appreciate it. And thank you all for tuning in to WGAT 98.3 FM, your voice, your music, your station. My name is Jeff Badu. And I look forward to continuously delivering you all some content. Thank you. You're listening to WGHC 98.3 FM. Spoil you, but we are nothing friend from the year the first time. We have to trust in them. We are not spoil you. Get anything you like. Long as you are right, then me are right. You know what you want, that's why I'm alive. Your voice. Your music. Whether me in a first, or jeans, or short shots, head raised when me walk past. Me feel the eyes, me leave the eyes, me love the light, me do it despite. Baby, I'm not, they say you like you all like, I got you all like, baby, I'm not, anywhere that's cool, I can follow you to go, baby, I'm not, you won't let you're listening to WGHC 98.3 FM. New level, new level. New level, new level. 